With Creo Simulate 3.0, users will be able to perform a fatigue analysis with multiple load sets. This has been a frequently requested enhancement for many fatigue analysis users. In previous releases, users had to add all their loads into a single load set, which may not always be preferred. Depending on the type of load being applied, users might want to group them separately. In addition, users might want to have the control to analyze certain loads, but not others. This flexibility has not been previously available. On the screen is a gearbox component. As you can see in the model tree, I've defined three distinct loads. As with any fatigue analysis, we do need to define a material that has specific fatigue criteria set. Let's take a look at the material assigned. In this case, we've applied a gray cast iron material definition. At the bottom, you'll see the section for fatigue. Like we've seen in previous releases, we do need to define a unified material law. However, there's been changes to the actual drop-down menus for material type and surface finish. First of all, we've optimized the list to ferrous, titanium, aluminum, and a new option, other. In addition, we've also revised the surface finish list, as shown on the screen. Now, if you're utilizing a model from a previous release, the model will need to be converted. Users will be presented with a warning message indicating that some of the surface finishes defined in the model are no longer supported. Users will be asked to define the failure strength reduction factors to take these finishes into account. Once the materials are defined and applied, we can close the window. The first analysis that we need to run is a static analysis. In this case, I've already run the static analysis called Gearbox. At this point, let's go run our fatigue analysis. Within the fatigue analysis definition, we're going to see some changes. First and foremost, the previous analysis tab is listed first with the load history tab following second. This is a change from previous releases. You're going to see the given load specified in the model. In this case, we'll select all three. Once selected, we can click on the load history, where we can define the overall desired endurance life. In this case, we'll type in 2E plus 5. Then we can define the loading criteria for each load set. Right now, it's showing load 1. I'd like to change the amplitude type to 0 to peak. I'll then select the load set to load set number 2, and again, change the type to 0 peak. Lastly, to load set 3, and change it to 0 peak. At this point, we can go ahead and click on OK and run our analysis. Once completed, we can now go review the results. We'll review the fatigue fringe plot for log life. As we can see, the majority of our model has a log life of 20, which means 10 to the power of 20 cycles will pass before a crack initiates. However, we can review the model and see certain areas that have lower defined log life. To help us get a better perspective, we can select on the legend and enter in a defined value. In this case, we could enter in 15. This will redistribute the levels linearly from first to last, where we can get a better idea of where we have some potential issues in our model. This enhancement drastically improves our ability to analyze our model with multiple loads to determine life expectancy of our design.